Hi, it's Sophia here. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to my channel, so do well. So yeah, basically this video, um, I filmed it back in October 2020, looking back at Black History Month. I'm just releasing it now. Um, yeah, it's just a little light look back at the Somali experience of Black History Month. And so yeah, let me know if you enjoyed the video. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and you can follow me on Instagram at Sophia Jamma, that's S-O-P-H-I-A-J-A-M-A -A -A underscore. Hi, it's Sophia here, welcome to my channel. Um, if you're new to my channel, basically I'm called Sophia. Um, I'm from Yorkshire, I'm half English and I'm half Somali. Um, yeah, feel free to check out the other videos on my channel. There's a few travel ones, some cultural ones, some mukbangs, different stuff. So yeah, basically, um, t today I thought I'd celebrate, um, well, basically it's looking back, because uh, in October in the UK, it's Black History Month. I think it's maybe February or something in the US, but in the UK we celebrate in October. And um, yeah, so I thought I'd do a video, and it's only right when I'm talking about Somali culture that I'm wearing a barty. Yeah, so basically, um, in the video it's like I'm going to take a look at like events that I've gone to online events throughout Covid for Black History Month um, and this is kind of like my videos the Somali experience of Black History Month um, basically growing up I've always been like really interested in like Somali history Somali like genealogy the culture and like from when I was a kid like I used to come home and I'd like from school I'd like read, read about it and like find a lot out about it and stuff and research it but basically everything that I found out about Somali history and Somali culture all of that was from outside the classroom I never in school got taught anything to do with about being Somali so it was all like stuff that I researched and self-taught so now it's amazing as an adult that there's so many platforms that like you can like discuss and uh, like get involved with so many things to do with Somali culture and Somali history so not every one of the events that I've been to is Somali but the majority like Somali based but um, the majority of them are but like based in the UK and um, so yeah so the first one is um, Somali Nima and um, basically Somali Nima or Somali Nima and um, it's basically it means Somaliness and there was a documentary on the guardian uh, i'll put the link in the description below you can check it out on the guardian their youtube channel and somali nima was a documentary about uh, it was with our farah and it was directed by a lady called alice and it was um basically it was about that the somali experience of i think it was around four somali girls going to cambridge university um so it was about like their experience at cambridge and stuff like that so yeah, the, in the documentary, the the S Somali Nimo documentary, um, the cin cinematography was amazing. It was like filmed at Cambridge. And they basically, one thing that they did that I found really interesting was they recreated a Somali living room and it had like all the things that are synonymous with like Somali culture. So like the big curtains often, you if you're Somali and you're watching this, you can probably relate that if you go to a relative's house that are like, a, Som a Somali household they have really like elaborate curtains um, and also there's the unsi which is like Somali incense so that they like recreated that because they felt like the, the space at Cambridge wasn't like built for them and it was about like gr where a lot of them were from London so they were just blend in being Somali but they felt like it was a very visible thing when they went to Cambridge so it was all about their experience and a lot of the diaspora on social media really got behind the Somali Nimo thing and it really took off so yeah that was really interesting and then I, so I watched the documentary and then I went to like a discussion with the Guardian that was online where they like spoke more about it and stuff so yeah that was really interesting and um so yeah definitely go and check that out and then the next event that i went to was somali week festival 2020 run by Cade somali arts and culture they do like hannah ali the director and the team there they do so much work um for the diaspora for somali week festival and other events so i was really i've been looking forward to attending that face to face but it was still really good that i could attend it online and yeah i went to so many events i've got them written down because i went to quite a lot of them 
um, and there's a real range of events like some for some in Somali, some in English, some for older people, some for children. Every, like it was really inclusive, which is great. And um, yeah, the one of the events I went to was there was like an opening event um, that was interesting, and then. Um, th- another event that I went to there was a Tower Hamlets collaboration event because there's like a big Somali community in Tower Hamlets in East London I think like it dates back to when like the Somali seamen came over to the East London docks and stuff and it was about like how because obviously Covid's had like a devastating impact on the Somali community in London and around the world which is really sad because it's really affecting Somalis a lot and they discussed like the uh, aftermath of Covid in the Somali community and they'd done some really interesting things like the community there they'd set up like a Somali food bank Um, I found that really interesting because I actually volunteer at a food bank so they are really important so it was good that the Somali community got behind that because food poverty is a prob is a real problem in the UK and particularly in like a pandemic it's really important so it was really good to see how like the community spirit that they had there. Um another event that I went to for um Somali Week was um an Oxford house. I think maybe Cade is based Oxford House in Tower Hamlets or was based there and um, basically it was like a cultural celebration that it had like music poetry dance there was some traditional Somali dance that was good wasn't it yeah really yeah good. that was really cool they had the really nice um like outfit on with like the red and or oh, was it blue I can't remember but it, and the white but yeah it was really it was really good and then the abaya of the girls um Jasmine Carlia did a really good song like she performed is it all for one this song's really catchy it's really good and then the photographer Rose's Peaches she did a poem that was really good there was Ibrahim Sincere and lots of other uh, artists performing which was really good and then another event that I went to for Somali Week Festival was Majid Majid um, the former York I've got to big him up because he's a Yorkshire Somali of course um, he's the former Lord Mayor of Sheffield and he was a um, MEP for the Yorkshire and Humber and this event was to like celebrate his book The Art of Disruption well, yeah it was really interesting um, to hit, listening to him speak and stuff like that and um, he actually went to university in Hull so that's cool and yeah it was really inspiring and then the the closing event um, for Somali Week Festival um, was Sultan Sarah the um it was like the concert which was really good i love the song african woman um so yeah that was really fun to watch that but yeah it, there was such a range of events and yeah it's really nice that um they were so accessible because if you go to i'll put the link again in the description below but if you go to Cade somali arts and culture to their youtube channel you can watch the events and it was great because like they were free so they were so accessible and uh, i sent it to people like in Somalia and Somaliland in Europe like friends and family and they watched it like from around the world so which usually if you attend an event in the UK like they could probably reach a big like a different audience and stuff so I suppose that's interesting during a pandemic how you can reach different um, audiences and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really good that there's lots of Somali events where you can like um, learn more about Somali history and Somali culture because I've always found that the like the black British experience or the narrative often leaves in the mainstream leaves out like the Somali experience, which I think is a shame. And like growing up, everything that I've learned about Somali culture, like I said before, has been like outside of the classroom. So it's good that there's events that you can go to that way you can like just learn so much more about the culture and the history so the next uh, well it wasn't actually event an event it was like something online that i watched and it was uh, ilwad elman the somali canadian peace activist and basically she won the german Af- the german yeah german africa prize and that was for her work that she does like a peace activism work and basically she has like a peace center in mogadishu where she um 
there's like girls can play basketball there. She does like yoga on the beach, doesn't she? Yeah. She calls it, yeah. She calls it like yoga dishu, which is funny, and she does so much good work. So it's really good, and she's really brave. So it's really good that like her work was celebrated in Black History Month. And then another online event that I went to is by two Somali Canadian sisters based in the UK. One of them is, I think, studying at Cambridge. And it's their series of podcasts, which are called On Things We Left Behind. It's really interesting. They, like, explore uh, things to do with, like, archives because, obviously, they're really crucial to, like, um, sustaining the culture because if you flee from, like, a war-torn country in the Somali region, there's lots you have to leave behind. So it's really important that they're, like, looking in and then exploring that and one thing they touched on in the online event that I went to which I could really relate to as I'm sure other people in the diaspora can is nostalgia um, that both like being for, for Somalis that were born uh, in the Horn or Somalis that grew up in the diaspora that have never visited I could relate to that because I often think like it would have been really good to have been around in Mogadishu like in the 50s and 60s and seen like uh people like Waberi and Dodo Band perform and stuff like that. I have actually been lucky to see a few members of Waberi. I went to one of Cade's events, the Hadedi retirement concert, but yeah, it would have been really good to see them like in Mogadishu at the time. And the uh, an- last two events, one of them was David Olasoga and that was black and British. And that was him exploring like what it's like to grow up black and British. And he looks quite a lot into the history of it. Um, and he talks about like what it's like to grow up in the north of England uh, being black and British and yeah he puts a lot of emphasis on the government and organisations to do more so yeah it's really important and the last event was Geoffrey Boacci he's an author Uh, he was a teacher in central London Uh, I'm currently reading his book at the moment Blacklisted it's really interesting and I've read one of his previous books called Hold Tight which is uh it's about grime i'm not sure if you're interested in grime music it's a genre of music in the uk um and yeah the book's really interesting so yeah i hope you've enjoyed me talking a bit about like what events i went to or attended online in um the pandemic in black history month uh and yeah i hope you enjoyed the the somali experience side of things